Thank you. Congrats, Fred. Ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know, that was Chan Poling singing Love is the Law. Some of you may know him as the founder of the suburbs. Those of you of a certain vintage like me may have rocked out to the suburbs back in the day. Some of you may know him as the founder of the New Standards. Others know him as Joan and Walter Mondale's son-in-law and the husband of the late Eleanor Mondale. Thank you very much, Chan. Again, let's give it up for Chan. That, that song that Chan just sang, this is a parenthetical, but it speaks to the theme of this evening. Some of you may know Love is the Law became the de facto anthem of Minnesotans United in 2013 as they endeavored to pass a law in this state so that all people, regardless of their gender, could marry the person that they love. And regardless, yeah. <laughs> Regardless of your politics, I think you would agree with me that it's a good example of how music and public policy can complement each other at times. I had the great honor of hearing Chan perform that song, Love is the Law, at the end of Fritz Mondale's 90th birthday celebration in January, and it left me in tears as he sang it to his father-in-law, and it was beautiful, and I'm so glad you sang it for us tonight. So... Most, if not all of you, were just in the auditorium hearing our panel discussion about arts as an inspiration for the common good. I cannot miss this opportunity, I promise I'll be brief, to tell you a little bit about how the Humphrey School is directly connecting with the arts institutions that you heard um, on the panel. First of all, Matthew Welch, where is Matthew Welch? Where did he go? Is he? He's over there, Matthew Welch, who is the chief curator from MIA, you heard from him, at the Minneapolis Institute of Arts. He has been a partner with me for months now in uh, putting together the, the, the naming celebration and most specifically the beautiful display, display case that's lit over here that uh, showcases a collection of Joan Mondale's pottery. Matthew has been remarkable in, in his uh, dedication and his contribution of time and talent. And at one point when I asked Matthew, how could we ever compensate him for his time in doing this? I hope you don't mind that I say that. He said, there's absolutely nothing you can do to compensate me. I would walk through fire for Mr. Mondale. <laughs> Thank you, Matthew. You also heard from Kara Martinez, who does community outreach work at the Guthrie Theater. And Kara and I have been talking for a few months now about building a stronger partnership between Humphrey students and performances at the Guthrie because they trigger such important public policy conversations. This spring they will be staging an enemy of the people and I'm hoping that many of our science, technology and environmental policy students will be um, in attendance at one of the performances, hopefully together, and then we're gonna launch a conversation about what is it that that play has to say for our environmental policy practices today and how can it inform and inspire us. And then I'm most excited to tell you, you heard from Roderick Cox from the Minnesota Orchestra, and they will be traveling to South Africa this summer. Um, that's following a whole Summerfest celebration of South African music here in Minnesota. Some of you know that for the last five years, the Humphrey School has hosted the Mandela Washington Fellows, 25 inspiring and aspiring social entrepreneurs from countries across Africa who come here in residence for seven weeks each summer. We will be, a small group of us from the Humphrey School will be traveling with the, the Minnesota Orchestra to South Africa and we will be hosting a reunion of the last five years of Mandela Washington Fellows in the township of Soweto. They will be there when the Minnesota Orchestra performs and they will be there to meet up with each other in the township and I am just absolutely tickled pink that we're gonna be able to do that and I'm so excited about that. So enough about the Humphrey School and we're gonna pivot a little bit from the arts to talk about the dedication of this common space that I said is the liveliest uh, part of the school. Imagine what if all of you were replaced with a bunch of um, studious Humphrey students and that's what it looks like most of the time during the day. So it's a great spot for community gatherings and I am so honored that we are namer, naming it 
um, in recognition of this mighty team of Joan and Walter Mondale. A student asked me recently, so why the focus on the arts and public policy? I don't really get it, you know? And I said, well, study the life of Joan and Walter Mondale as a couple, as a mighty team focused on cultural diplomacy, and then tell me if you don't get it after that. And one of the things I encourage that student to do, and all students to do, is to read the beautiful commentary about Joan and Walter Mondale in the collection of the pottery. Matthew Welch also drafted that. And once you read that, I think that you'll understand this deep connection that we're seeing between the arts and public policy, particularly as we think about cultural diplo diplomacy. So it is truly my honor to name the commons after this, this remarkable team um, that we have all benefited so much from. It's not an easy thing, though I came to learn uh, to name <laughs> a space at the university. It's kind of a big bureaucracy, and I just thought we would do it. <laughs> and then the president told me it didn't work that way and that we needed to get approval, um, and we did. And um, we have uh, University of Minnesota Board of Regents and President's Office approval for this naming. And here to tell you just what a heavy lift and tough sell that was <laughs> is University of Minnesota President Eric Kaler. Please welcome him. Thank you, Dean Blueberg, and thank you for your terrific leadership of the Humphrey School. You know, this wasn't her first effort. There was the Bloomberg Hallway she wanted to name earlier that we didn't let her do that. Uh, we didn't let her do that either. But you think about being in, um, in um, the Humphrey School. You think about Humphrey and Mondale. You think about Mondale and Humphrey. They go together like Minnesota and, I don't know, Ludafisk. <laughs> Probably our most famous two individuals together. My notes say, say something about Sven and Ole, but I'm not going to do that either. What great Americans, what great Minnesotans, and what great servants to our country these two have been. And now, in the Humphrey School, named after our state and the university's happiest warrior, we have this welcoming commons honoring Joan and Walter Mondale, the first couple of art, of diplomacy, of grace, and civility. Thank you, Mr. Mondale, and thank you to your family who gathered here. And I know that we are all thinking of Joan this evening, too, and the energy and elegance she brought to the Mondale team. I guess, actually, Mr. Vice President, your 90th birthday party just is an ongoing affair here, and we're happy <laughs> to do that. The, the love, affection, and respect that uh, President Carter and Ambassador Albright brought when they came to our campus to honor you was remarkable. And having that party on our campus speaks to your, your role and your commitment to the university. The impact continues, as most all of you know, as the Vice President shares his wisdom and stories with future leaders of our state, the nation, and the world. And a wonderful teacher and example you are, sir. And of course, you are also so generous with your time as you support the Humphrey School's efforts as part of our Driven campaign. So it's now my honor to welcome to the podium Mr. Vice President, Mr. Ambassador, Mr. Senator, Mr. Attorney General, Mr. Mondale. Thank you for all you do. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President, for those kind words and for your inspired leadership of our most important institution and for your friendship to all of us. And uh, Dean Bloomberg, thank you for getting this idea and driving it through the bureaucracy uh, <laughs> to point the point we can celebrate tonight. And you, you are as good a dean as we've ever had, maybe the best. And I really enjoy working with you. We're, we're blessed to have Laura with us. Uh, she's got drive. I, I don't know. She's like, Humphrey always had an extra engine. Where's, where's Hubert Jr.? You're around here. You know what I mean. He never had to sleep. He just kept going. And that's what Laura's got an extra engine. Uh, she's going to Norway. She's going to, where have you been? 
China, yeah, that's just around the block. <laughs> and, uh, and here she is helping us move this most essential institution, this Humphrey School, forward to play the role that it must. We have so many people here tonight. Please pardon me for uh, missing a lot of you. Joan grows here. God bless her. Uh, I saw Mike Freeman a minute ago. We're so glad to have him here. Great name. Just lost his mother. Um, and um, Sam and Sylvia Kaplan, uh, former ambassador to Morocco, one of our most important citizens, a real team, and we're glad to have Sam and Sylvia with us tonight. We got a lot of judges. You know, I, I like judges. <laughs> I, I really wanted to be one, but they wouldn't put me there. So <laughs> I was left to politics. We got uh, Associate Justice David Littlehog. Where are you, David? You're still okay. Raise your hand. So what, what are you hiding behind there? <laughs> and uh, district judge and chief judge of our district, Jack Tunheim. He was here. And uh, I want to say a special word to Marge Spanis. As you know, a few months ago, Minnesota lost one of its most important and magnificent public servants in Warren Spanis. Marge is here tonight. Let's give Marge a big hand for being here. And a moment ago, I saw Betty McCollum, the, Congress, the great congresswoman from across the river. Where are you? Yeah. Don't, don't, don't be shy, Betty. Just get right in there. Uh, uh, Peggy Lucas, are you? I heard she was here. Uh, give her my, okay, good. My, my neighbor, bring over some more food, will you, so I can live through this. Um, tonight we um, were also blessed by a secret group that arrived here. These were Joan's classmates from the 1948 class at Summer School. We've got uh, Debbie Bancroft, we had uh, Millicent Lang, and we have Sally Lehman. Let's give them all a hand for coming over. Here. And then, then we have a, a person that needs to be recognized. It's George Millard. George brought the ladies over. He is a, a, a graduate, I think, of 1948. St. Paul uh, Academy, and he is, uh, well, let's admit it, he's my fishing buddy, <laughs> and, and you can't get more sacred than that, but, but one more thing, he asked Joan out to her first date after she arrived in Minnesota, so let's give George a big hand <laughs> for that. Uh, And to all of you who should have been recognized, please blame my speechwriter. Uh, I just want to say two things. I'm old enough to have been around when we were sitting down with Hubert at a time when he was starting to fail, to try to work up an idea so that his life could live on and we could have something that Humphrey truly believed in as a way of remembering and honoring him. And I'll never forget, there were about eight or 10 of us there, and he said, the main thing is I don't want a dead memorial. I don't want people around here just honoring that old guy and how he died and stuff like that. He said, I want a place that's alive where young people can get educated and reach their dreams. That's what this should all be about. And the whole idea of the Humphrey School was built around that dynamic concept. And boy, has it been alive. Has it given young people now for, what is it, 47, 48 years now it's been here. And helping young people all over get a chance. And I hear from young people all the time about how they got their start here. And I'm, I'm really proud of them. And look at this school now. Um, we started out 
brand new school, not knowing quite what we were doing. And now we're, I think, the eighth most. Uh, third, the third best. <laughs> I, I've always been good with numbers. <laughs> but it, a great school and, and national and international recognition, drawing powerful faculty and the best student body. We've got to be proud of that. Uh, and then I want to step down with this point. This uh, atrium, this commons, is now going to be, thank you, God bless you, named for Joan and me. Uh, I am so glad we're doing something to remember Joan. Uh, she was my partner, and boy, was she a partner. We, we got things done, we traveled, and, but she always insisted that her life was hers. And she was gonna do things where she uh, made her statement. She'd support me, which she surely did. She'd gone campaign for me, but deep down, she also had something else to say. And what she had to say is so beautifully reflected in what we were dedicating today. And that was the arts and the relation of the arts and ceramics. Um, when we'd been in Japan for four years, and she was throwing pots and talking to her friends over there about the arts, and I was selling auto parts. <laughs> and when, <laughs> when it was over and we had a farewell ceremony, I had a trickle of people who wanted to say goodbye to me, and the whole room was full of people who wanted to say goodbye to Joan. They loved Joan. Joan went out of there a hero and a saint. And I think what this says is that in public life, where possible, where we should encourage not just the principal, but the, the couple, if they're married, to work together and to allow us to get two for one. And that's been part of the secret of progressivism in Minnesota. Hubert and Muriel, they were everywhere together, and Muriel was everywhere together. Or and um, Jane Freeman, who we just spoke about a minute ago, they were always there. Don and Arvon, I don't know if they're here, but they are always here. And again and again, we've, and Sam and Sylvia, another good example, again and again, we found if you do it together, it's always better. So thank you very much and good night. Let's invite Ted and William to do the official honors because I'm sure you're really going to be surprised at what it says underneath this ribbon up here. And if all goes according to plan, this will work. But I'm going to cover my head just in case. Three, two, what are we doing here? You're pulling. Three, oh, two, he pulls, right. three, two, one, go. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> Stay, enjoy, eat, socialize, and have a wonderful evening. Thanks so much for being here.